When Jesus saves you, he does it all at once. He doesn't set you up on a 30-year payment plan. Salvation is not a mortgage. When he comes in, he comes all the way in. And for those of you who have received his grace, let me tell you something that's amazing. That's amazing. Get ready, shout, lean on the edge of your seat. You will never be more forgiven than you are right now. You will never be more loved than you are right now. When he forgives you, he forgives you completely, immediately, fully, without qualification. There is no corner of your heart he didn't see when he sent his spirit to live within you. You will never be more forgiven than you are right now. But there is a difference between forgiveness and freedom. Forgiveness happens all at once. Freedom happens little by little by little by little. And it's often so incremental that you don't even think it's happening. This is for everybody who's 40 and thought you would be smarter than you are right now. <laughs> and you keep doing dumb stuff that you've been doing all your life, and you still feel… I'll preach to the back row. I don't need any love. <laughs> You're doing stuff right now that you were doing at age 14, and you got your own 14-year-old. And you still feel like a little kid yourself. It, it happens to, to it, it happened to Paul. Paul was that great apostle. Have you heard of him? He took the gospel to the Gentiles. What God started through Abraham, he continued through Paul. He, he told Abraham, he said, I got an assignment for you. All the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. What a what an assignment. He said, but don't worry about it. I'm going to bless you so you can be a blessing. I will not require from you a resource that I do not put within you. You hear me? If God call, called you to raise those hard-headed kids, he will make your head even harder. Boom. You met your match now. Because God, God gave me a cranium that can withstand all of your craziness. Now, God gives him the assignment, and he gives him the assistance. And Paul, in many ways, was graced. He was graced to be able to speak eloquently. He was graced to be able to preach to the diaspora of the Jewish tradition that he himself came from. But one thing about Paul he couldn't understand. He couldn't understand. There was something in his life that he expected God to take away that God left. You got anything like that? Y'all are looking at me so weird right now. Maybe you're beyond Paul. I would understand if you were holier than Paul. That would, that would make sense. But Paul was struggling. He hadn't quite arrived to your level of spiritual development and maturity. Paul said, there, there was something that I asked God to do for me that he would not do. Now, if you want to know what it was, Paul's going to disappoint you because he refuses to name it by name. And I'm glad he didn't name it by name, because if he would have said it, I couldn't relate to it. But the fact that he used this image, and I want to read it to you now, 2 Corinthians 12, 7, it means that whatever is left in your life, whatever is left in your life that you have been blaming on the devil can be used by God to fulfill his purpose for your life. If you got anything like that, wave at me so I can see the seven people that God gave me this message for. Paul said, I, I, I was ascended to the third heaven. I saw things unutterable. I was used by God in ways that are astounding, in fact, beyond human vocabulary. Therefore, now watch this. This is crazy. He says, because of that level of blessing, God gave me an equal burden. Because the greater the assignment, the greater the adversity. The greater the assignment, the greater the attack. So Paul said, God took me up so high and showed me so much that there had to be something in my life that would keep me grounded to his grace. He doesn't name it by name. He doesn't need to because he knows you have your own. So he simply says, therefore, in order, here's the clue, to keep me from becoming conceited. 
There was something that God gave Paul to keep him in a space called grace so that he would never forget who led him along the way, so that he would never forget who brought him out of bondage and darkness into the marvelous light. God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave some stuff in your life. And so, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, there was given to me. Sounds like he's about to get a new car, right? He gave me. Gave me. That's got me in the mindset of a gift. What did he give you, Paul? Did he give you a house? Did he give you a promotion? Did he give you a blessing? No, no, no. He gave. Paul said, one day the devil showed up on my doorstep with a package, and it had a bow on it. I was. I opened the package, and in the package was a thorn. Now it was a gift, but it didn't look like a gift. It was a gift but it was wrapped in something that looked like pain. I was given, watch this, a thorn in my flesh. Was it a sickness? Was it a temptation Paul had? Was it people talking about him and he couldn't shut him up? Was it Facebook? <laughs> Probably. And he calls it, this is crazy, a messenger of Satan. How can he refer to it as a gift if it came from the enemy? It was sent to torment him. That was the devil's intention, to torment him. Paul said, God took what the enemy intended to torment me and used it to transform me. So. The enemy's tools of torment become God's tools of transformation. And now I get it. Now I get Exodus 23, because it's not just the angels that God sends ahead of you that he uses to bless you. Those are wonderful. It's not just all of the promotions, and it's not just the prosperity, and it's not just the peaceful situations. It's not just the yeses. Sometimes God uses the no's to lead you to a greater yes. God said, no, I won't take it away, but yes, I will give you so much grace that you will be stronger than it, and you will discover a power that you could have never known if you didn't have a problem. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the message, just do two simple things before you go. Click the logo to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss a video. I promise I'll make it worth your while. And second, take a minute and share it with somebody who could use it, or just leave a comment. I love to hear how these videos are impacting you. It means a lot to me. Thanks again for watching.